but we, we should check in with, with, with comment Peter. What do you think, Peter? Peter? How are you doing, buddy? I'm doing good, man. We've got a couple up there. CJ covers some of them. But uh, uh, the ugly mofo seems funny. Everyone's concerned about Russia interfering in the last election. In the last election, why would we do mail-in ballots and make it easy for any country to fake a vote? That's a fair question, I guess. Uh, I I wasn't personally worried about Russia interfering. I looked at that as a uh, a distraction for people to, you know, uh, like I said. I believe they've been cheating the election every cycle one way or another. They've been manipulating it and cheating it by themselves. It wasn't anybody else interfering when it, when people got too close and people started realizing, Oh wow, look, these elections are obviously being manipulated. Then a certain people with big enough platforms said, look, Russia did it. Look, here's the tiniest bit of evidence that suggests that Russia might have possibly did it. So go gobble that up, MSM, you know, mainstream media. Go freaking. And they ran with it, of course, because that's their job to do that. And so so back to the question, why would we make it easier for any country to fake vote? I mean, I, I, I'm not sure. I feel like I knew this at one point, but I'm drawing a blank right now. But I know there's got to be a better system with the world we live in. I mean, it's 2020 with our technology. I can't imagine there's not a way to have like online voting so that er everybody could only vote once, you know, because of their IP address or it would be linked to your Social Security number or something. You type your Social Security number in and then you vote. CJ's going to weigh in on this. Okay. He's gonna oh, I'm totally going to weigh on this yeah, one, Adam. Go ahead. Bring it on. Adam. Uh, uh, Adam. Jim, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> well, whoever you are hosting this yeah. show, I don't you recognize have the you. in on me now. So, uh, Jim, uh, just so you're aware, in the libertarian presidential lead up to who's the front runner, a lot of states were using, uh, you know, your IP address for voting, and we're not, in, not the smartest of cookies in the jar. And I was able to vote as many times as I wanted to. Admittedly, only did it once to prove a point. You can multi-vote. Yeah. And yeah, so, yeah. so yeah, that's out of the picture. Social security voting, uh, I believe, would be out of the picture because you're going to end up having to uh, – listen, it's kind of like in the Libertarian Party. If you don't do it all legally right the first time, you're screwed in the legal end in the, out, in the, in the long run. So any oh, opportunity, like that comment saying, to, to make it so that a vote can be rigged or questioned – is, how is, can it not be? How can it not be? Well, this is the only way that I'm. Everybody's going to hate you. Have to use the proper channels of voting, um, and that's and that's uh, you got to. Yeah, I mean, uh, as if much as everybody in a big field, all all three hundred million of us in the country, and and went and individually wrote on a piece of paper and had it brought to a certain amount of people, that can still be rigged. That yeah. can still be manipulated yeah. and messed up. It's too big. Well, it's yeah. too big too hard to keep track of it can be manipulated regardless of how you run the system period and they have enough money to do it they're the only ones with the r's and d's are the only ones with enough money to actually keep manipulating it we can try to manipulate it and pretend we manipulate it and etc etc but no yeah there's nothing we can do it gets rigged by the r's and the d's who knows if it's if it's an actual battle between them or if they're just putting on a show as combatants to you know what i mean one year it's a republican one year it's a democrat who knows but probably on it's probably a a script written out for the last 50 years i, I think that's why who's been president that because let, let's let's face it how many people truly actually really vote in this country if we look at the percentages of those yeah, that half, are allowed to the, vote the, those that do i mean good question let's google it yeah. Yeah, isn't yeah. it like less than half of the actual like, population oh, actually gosh, votes or something? Literally like twelve yeah. percent. Like very, very, I thought it was like forty something or thirty six or forty something percent. It, but it, you know, CJ yeah. will find out. He's digging oh, for it. I'm finding out right it's now. That's the point. I mean, the point is it's low, a, a, a tiny fraction. So you got the whole population of the country. Obviously, children. You know what I mean? You, you're not counting babies and stuff like okay. that. Okay. Rational decisions. That's 2012. Let's see. Um, Let's see here. The I want to find like a an actual credible source for this. How many people vote in the United States of eligible voting eligible population? What was the turnout for the election? Um, 
I guess, well, I guess according to Wikipedia, no, that's never say according to Wikipedia. Holy cow. Let's just go with 2020. Oops. Yeah. Right. Um, Voting registration tables, voter turnout could be record breaking in 2020. Uh, let's see, 23 uh, immigrants were, they're saying immigrants were voting. The status.com, okay. Steven um, on YouTube says it's like 50%. Yeah, well, again, you know, uh, what, I guess. What, what was the, I mean, count the totals of the popular vote for the last election. You know what I mean? What was it? They got like 50 million votes each. That's yeah, all right. over a hundred million. That's a third of the country, but you got to count for, like I said, children and under 18s that aren't voting. So whatever the voting population is, it's about half of that. I think half of the voting population is what. Actually okay, is here we go. This is the U S census at, uh, that's a 2020 man. They never make it easy to find the, uh, Information that could help you, yeah. Yeah, the information that can help you when you're looking it up. So uh, it says here that's breaking it down yeah, by exactly. age. Meaning the winner is like 25. percent So that so that's what I was saying. Oh, here we go. It, all right, according according to the U.S. Census, it says in 2016, 61.4 percent of the citizens voting age population reported voting. Uh, a number not statistically different from 61.8% in 2012. So 61.4% of the eligible voting population is what voted. Supposedly. So almost, um, they don't even have, per Robert's rules of order, enough voting population, eligible voters, to actually make any laws. This is an illegitimate right. government out the mm -hmm. gate. I wow. Feel, I don't know how many times those words have been spoken on this here channel. That's, that's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, right. in our yeah. own party, we, we, we couldn't even make a new rule or a new law or change anything, a bylaw. We couldn't do nothing if that was our turnout. And that's even if everybody agreed. That's even if everybody agreed with, with hey, we 100% need this on, on, to change, to happen. Uh, we will, we wouldn't even have enough, like, man, I'm telling you, uh, it, to me, it kind of goes, well, that means that 61.4% of the population makes the rules for 100% of the population. And when you break that down even further, it's right. whoever's in charge of which percentage whoever the majority won. is right. of that 61.4. So now we have less than a third of the population making laws for the entire population yeah right. it's pretty fun exactly. exactly. well, well thanks youtube I, i'll i know which box to click don't worry yep that's the way man and then, yeah and we just accept it like it's no big deal and and we're worried about uh mail-in ballot i think i think it's to do to do two things the mail-in ballot scare or whatever you want to call it because like i said they can rig it no matter how you do it. They don't care how you run the thing. They'll no. put their money behind it and rig it that way. You know what I'm saying? So for them to suggest a specific way or against a certain way is for a specific purpose, obviously. And I think that purpose is just spitballing, obviously, to scare us into thinking that the election is going to be rigged. And like the guy said in the article, to to pave the way for Trump to say, if he loses his say, oh no, see, I told you, this is the thing. Cause he think he figures he, he talks crap about mail-in ballots. They say, oh, don't worry about it. Mail-in ballots are fine. And they pump that out into the narrative. And then when Trump loses or if Trump loses, he can use that as a, see, I told you it was the mail-in ballots. It'll be his crutch to save face. Cause he's a 10 year old that doesn't like to swallow his pride we've been dealing with this we've been dealing with this for you know almost every election cycle it, it there's always a complaint it's always a let's check it's, I mean, it's been going I mean, let's go back to bush you know when we had all those issues and then people add in the electron you know electoral college and this and there's always going to be a complaint when the one side loses they're going to do whatever they can to say the other side cheated or whatever you know it's never, it's never, hey, people well, just voted and you're not in office. Well, well just for the record, I, I am a libertarian candidate for public office this year. And as a libertarian candidate for public office, I assure you, both parties cheat to win in their respective states. 
Both yeah. parties attempt to cheat every year at the national at every level. level, at ev- and local levels, and and so again, well, uh, you know why why I why I would join this and think that running would change it. I'm of the mindset of those thirty. What is it? Twenty nine point, uh, or no? It actually thirty nine. Or thirty-eight point six, thirty-eight point six percent of people that didn't vote that are eligible to vote better figure out. Yeah, hey, maybe we're not going to vote for those two. We better wake up in mass and start really supporting right. third-party candidates because right. you know a lot of people make the mistake and think, "Oh, libertarian, you're just going to bring on the same old same," right? Well, there's never been a libertarian government. There's never been this. So you're. You're, you're lumping it in like this political party is what you believe the statist answer is to what the current two parties represent. We are the, I call them like Adam said, they're not, they're not two parties. They're two wings of the same party. They're, they're right. the socialist party of America. They're just the left and right of the socialist party of America. Just like the libertarian party has left and right libertarians. And yes, we argue amongst petty differences and Robert's rules of order and what's in proper order and what's not, or, you know, that stuff. But we've never been in charge of a government and implemented right. true Robert's rules of order on a federal level. And, and again, I'm a, I was, again, still proudly say would vote for Adam Kokesh before anybody really, to, as long as the premise is abolish the federal government. Right. Uh, you know, when I tell that to, when I tell that to status, they go, but what, 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 what about my cops, CJ? What, what about what about my roads, CJ? What 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 about my government money, CJ? And I'm like, well, if listen, if you're just gonna admit that you're a welfare recipient to government, yeah. then then just be proud of it, then. Yeah. Right. So what are you we know? even talking about? Yeah. Right, right. Like, if you're not here to talk about your freedom, if you're not here to talk about how to be independent of government, then then you, what you're telling me is you're we're giving me on the same page. Yeah, we're not even on the same level of intellectual thinking when it comes to what a government actually should be. So, I mean, I definition of freedom. That's for sure. You're you're 100 percent right. And again, you know, running libertarian is becoming more and more difficult even. And you'll find that out when your guest that comes on today, Thomas Queter, he can tell you for for sure that when Larry Sharp ran for governor and got the libertarians on the ballot, we were on the ballot. We're supposed to be a viable choice. Well, the R's and D's didn't like it. Why? Because we started pulling numbers from them. We started to open people's eyes and get people to see that there is truly a possible choice that is beneficial for freedom and for Americans to be not dependent so much on government and to be big people and grow up. Once you're grown up, you're grown up. You should be taking care of yourself anyway. But the fact of the matter is it's gotten to the point now that even after that ballot access was granted, we had uh, Larry Sharp and Tony Diozero in New York teamed with the Green Party, and now they actually have a lawsuit to just even be. Yeah, that. yeah. How so that- check this. So check this out, Peter. I'm glad you brought that up because I ran for governor the same year that Larry ran for governor, mm-hmm. and the guy that ended up beating me for the nomination for the Libertarian Party at in 2018 was a guy that that uh, was not a Libertarian. He went at one like uh, I think it was like two weeks before. He came even over to the Libertarian Party. Uh, he was claiming to be the chairman of the Constitution Party. Uh, and, and you know, the, there's actually a former governor candidate that I met here this last weekend, Terry LaFleur, and he was telling the, me and the news camera that the Republican Party and the former Secretary of State were rigging the vote, were helping control and manipulate third parties' decision-making so they could get me... Not to be debating Christy Noem and Billy Sutton. They went and elected and nom- and they nominated a guy that has a stocking chart from 2002 that's not even a libertarian just to make sure that I didn't debate Christy Noem and Billy Sutton. This came from a guy that I fundamentally disagree with on many political aspects, but he had the respect and decency enough to tell me, hey, CJ, they rigged that against you yeah. for the nomination. And, and that's what I'm saying. You bring up the Green Party and the Libertarian Party working on the aspect. Here you got the Constitution Party and the Libertarian Party saying the same thing. The Republicans rigged this shit this year. The Republicans are the ones that are, are doing it out here in South Dakota, but that's the Democrats will do it in their states too. So, you know, they'll, I mean, it's all corruption. It's all voter fraud. It's, it, we, it, we say our former Secretary of State 
committed six election felony frauds, uh, uh, felony election fraud uh, crimes. The Christy Noam was directing it, and uh, Marty Jackley was covering it up. There was a back office deals with certain members of the Constitution Party and certain former members of the Libertarian Party, including our former chairman who went from immediately being chairman of the party to somehow being well-funded for the Republican Party in his district race this year. Mm. So it's kind of like, hmm, I wonder how much money he was promised. Campaign funding, for sure. But he was the former chairman of our state party switching sides, and it was like betrayal. It was like the death of Stalin. It was, it was insane. I'll say this, though. I'll say this, though. For as, as cheated as it is, we've been talking about how corrupt and how horrible, obviously, it is. Some people are saying, the, you know, like healthy disrespect, saying he's got the wasted vote crap <laughs> libertarian. That's the official excuse with libertarian when you bring it up. But it's important to stick to your guns on that libertarian, in my opinion. Now, I teeter totter. <laughs> I'm actually recently uh, attaching myself to the libertarian party uh, officially or whatever, because I've been sort of up leading up to till I got to the garden of freedom. And even it took me a little bit of while till I got here, I have to be coached into it because like I said, the libertarians, I'm a, what's that going to do? How is that going to change the world? But I feel like I figured it out. I feel like, like you said, that 38% of people that's just out there waiting, they're not voting because there's nobody worth voting for. Uh, the or they don't believe in voting at all. Some of them they don't believe in voting at all. Now, if we can convince them, see, that's the deal. That's the difference between libertarians is we're not afraid to use alternative tactics like telling the straight up truth that we, we, we're not even trying to win this election. <laughs> I, I love way, wait, 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 Jim. I got to stop you there because I love how you said that. We just we're using the all, you know, the alternative option of just telling the truth. Like, wait, the wait, wait, the truth. The, the yeah. truth the straight up truth is the That's alternative right option now. Wow. Unfortunately. <laughs> it's such a it huge hidden that. secret. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love it when you get the it's a wasted vote thing. And somebody did mention that in the comments, comments today. That but if you're wasting your vote by just voting for an R or a D, because you just happen to be registered in the R or a D but you don't agree with anything the person's saying, that's your wasted vote, people. Listen to the people that are out there and speak. Or if you're just voting straight party ticket because... Right, right. You know, you're just going down and... Do, 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 do. That's, that's your wasted vote. Your wasted yeah. vote doesn't go to a good candidate that brings good policy and great change. At the I, exact say, I mean, I what, say, I mean uh, what I was saying, though, to that point was even the candidates that like Vermin Supreme that are running uh, satirical campaigns. That's what I was kind of thinking. No, of when I, um, he, he was but, running a satirical. Now he, he ran a very serious campaign. Like know, that. That's what I'm talking about. When he was running a satirical campaign, that is to me uh, trying to increase the numbers of people looking at the Libertarian Party is important because once we're all, once we get the the votes up enough, like ten percent or some crap, enough to actually start being noticed by the popular masses, by the R's and D's that are brainwashed and everything, because we literally in in those you know I, I, world, I, I, they don't even pay attention to us. They don't even listen. They don't. They 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 I, watch. I agree. Clips that you could possibly could. We we but if we got bigger in the conversation by increasing, you know. I don't know. I don't know. Go ahead. You know, you know, and Jim, I, I agree with you there on all that you're saying. But then I think to myself, you know, do you really want to go entertain the cattle as they head to slaughter? Honestly, are you I mean, do you want to go get get a guitar and a drum set and go play, a, you know, a, a gig at the slaughterhouse? Because the cows don't care. They're going to walk into that slaughterhouse and into that feed shoot and think that they're getting a meal. And now they're getting one right between the head. I mean, right. The, they but don't if we can convince enough people to run for every office that's available on the libertarian ticket. I'm saying things like that. Oh, I agree with you. There. Like, what's this wave of, you know what I mean? All I pray sudden, every day that all happens, sudden, man. All of a sudden, instead of 16 Democratic candidates, you know, I mean, well, we did have 20 something libertarian yeah, yeah. for the nomination, but I mean, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, well, technically, yeah. every libertarian I mean, was like that for president. every office across the state levels and all that shit, too. The, the difference in that was that the 10, 12 candidates we did have running for POTUS 
didn't sit back and bash each other and try to assassinate each other and call each other names and say your policy you mean, you mean, my policy you, shit. Peter, you mean they actually had intellectual conversations you know, about they real problems? They basically agreed on principle. Yeah, yeah, they actually did. And the funny thing was is that, that that's what it was, was that maybe platforms were a little bit different. Maybe some were heavier in one aspect with some were heavier in another. But the whole fact of the matter was is, hey, if you win the nomination, we're picking you up on our shoulders and running with you. Mm -hmm. you know, And that's the way it should be. But on, uh, that's what always cracks me up, especially during when, like, think of the early, well, it's always early now because there hasn't been a debate in any kind of way other than our party or any kind of a conference held other than our party again because we haven't given up. But the Democrats, just think of that. And, you know, you're a this, you're a that, you're the other thing. Oh, I concede. He's the greatest thing since sliced bread. Let's put you know. I mean, come on, man. You you either uh, agree yeah. with someone or you don't agree with someone. And our candidates seem to agree on the basic principles of what needed to be changed. And what party did. platform sure was the rallying cry. But hey, I really want to point this out. Even if he's not oh. on the show, he's still with us in spirit. Yeah, so. <laughs> You know, shout out to Adam. I love the outdoors too, Adam. My guy's so cool out here. It's nice. I mean, I, the, the you're breeze, not sweating in the studio. The mic, so. Yeah, I'm <laughs> not sweating. Those things like you got on your other it is nice, man. It is nice. Yeah, we, it's a good obviously spot. we wish him and the missus well on uh, on their day off together and being reunited. So.